This summer, I set the goal of going 16.46 in a 5K, and on November 2nd, I officially set the PR of 16.44.47 seconds, going an average pace of 5.23 per mile on my sectionals meet to call the Project State. The road to get here was anything but linear. I made a lot of mistakes and I had a lot of doubts about myself and struggled with confidence and frustration when I wasn't hitting the times I needed. I'd even go as far as to say I went a little crazy over trying to break 17, but this is a story of how I, Moses Adams, became the third all-time fastest in a 5K out of my hometown in high school, additionally becoming the third fastest team in school history. But first, we have to start from the beginning. I'm going to start telling the story from high school, but a little bit of background information. I started running cross back in 2015. I would have a meet every Sunday on the same course, just going out running. It was funny because I didn't even understand like what I was doing. I thought I was just doing track up until like sixth grade until somebody corrected me. I took a long break through COVID seventh and eighth grade to kind of figure out life and what I wanted for myself and my future. And some would say that that's a little early to be thinking about all that, but if I didn't, I don't think I would ever live about five in the mile, let alone 17 in the 5K. My seventh and eighth grade years were spent pursuing my love for music, running around town, doing videos and, you know, like putting on shows for my friends and just putting out music for my friends to enjoy. And it's sad to think, but I think my environment killed my love for running because no one really respected it. I had no one who loved it how I did around me, so they made me feel weird for liking it. So I started to pursue other like normal things. In eighth grade, I joined my local basketball team and I was okay, but I was mainly good at scoring in transition and defense because I was just quick on my feet. Everywhere I would go, when I would zip across the court in transition, they would say stuff like, you should do track. I used to hate stuff like this. I found it embarrassing, but I'm so glad that they said it. Fast forward, I'm in Gwinnett County my freshman year. I joined the high school team, cross country team. I had a very different plan and perspective for what I wanted to do with my time and my life. I remember telling people that I only wanted to do cross country and then I was gonna get a job to pay for studio time. And my plans changed very quickly, but back to freshman year right i got my first pair of spices before i knew about the dragonflies they were real bulky and kind of heavy but they did the trick this was my first time genuinely running a 5k and so my first race the course was called athens christian academy right well that was a school but the course the run the meet was called like or something like that but here i got my first official 5k time down of 20 minutes and 10 seconds of course that's like rolled now but for, my, for our first race, it could have been much worse than that, much worse than that, so I won't say too much on it, and also because I barely remember it now. Um, to speak about the training, there's no exact one thing I could say. I remember it being a lot of traditional, like a lot more traditional than it is to this day. Things like 1K loops at the park, high mileage days, um, intervals, stuff like that. I do vividly remember my first couple of days I got grouped with JV a lot to run with JV because I was a freshman like obviously but I would go out of my way to run with varsity and I put myself in that position and kind of dragged other freshmen with me I asserted myself there because I knew I was better than who I was being grouped with and I stuck up with them in workouts long runs the whole deal my times dropped lower and lower and this is the time I was just I was so driven to break 19 being where I am now would be like the farthest thing from my mind race two comes i drop a 1919 at north georgia county rolls around 1915 apple hawkins 1910 every race i'm getting closer and closer inching closer and closer until one race where i'd smash my pr by a whole minute in 32 seconds a6 1818 i had gone out in my first 800 like crazy and then died off slowly my first 18 uh 800 was probably like going 15 pace but i was young i didn't understand pacing i didn't understand like controlling my speed or anything like that my whole race style up until this point and kind of still is is go out hard maintain and die when i i need to be finishing kind of like a little bit stronger but nevertheless i had smashed my goal of just being under 19 like i wasn't just under 19 now i was getting to 17s and for the first time i felt like proud that i ran like i i do running as a sport and because like i came from a place where they would shut the lights off at the track 
to save money for the town. I had gotten little bits and nuggets of success before the PR, but I still wasn't all the way committed. And I wasn't obsessed until A6. That's when I knew I wanted to take running to college. I kind of switched my path and switched the way I, my direction and where I wanted to go. It's, it's what reunited and reignited my love for the sport again. Coach Will rose around. I did it again, 1848, but I got sick. Um, whatever, bro. I still at least broke 19 again. Um, Regent comes around. That's Horse Park again. I, the same course as County, I ran 1913. Still a course PR, but at the end of the day, my, that was my, that was the end of my freshman year. Because with a PR of 1818, I was supposed to run at state as an alternate for somebody else that was hurt, but he ran injured because he wanted to run. And I was kind of bummed out about that, but like, I'm glad that I didn't because the whole, like the trip with the team, skipping school was so fun and enjoyable. And I just appreciate it to this day, like the stress free feel of that day. And even now I'm glad I didn't run to be honest, because I don't think I would have been ready anyway. I would have ran like a 20 the way the course was then. And this concludes my freshman year cross country season. Guerra, sophomore year. I'm on demon timing, y'all. Not really, I'm a Christian. I love God, but you know what I mean. I was trying to break 17 last year. Didn't get it, but I got real close. But it was my first year with the new coach, Coach NTN, and there was a lot of adjustment to things I just wasn't used to, his philosophy. I didn't get a watch till track season, so my mileage was probably somewhere in range of like 20 to 25 miles a week, 30 max during the the real season but it dramatically went down in comparison to last year which was good because i picked up a lot of injuries from the earlier years from like hard pavement miles and like really bad running shoes we were out of plan and we just trusted it first meet there were rumors of the course being short but i'm like whatever what do you want me to do about it i ran 1708 at Bob Blasto. It was a fast course, and I still PR'd by like a minute and some change too. So I didn't care if the course was short, fast, upside down. Let like I got a PR, and I had broke 18. And for me, that was the point that I was like, Yo, I'm actually not that rolled anymore. I'm not bad anymore. Like I'm I'm good enough to say that like I do this. Like I'm not just here for real. And like I had the potential to be good at what I do and what I've done for so long. And I took that motivation into the, the next few races and weeks of training, but it didn't go as I planned it. Biscuit was like 1839. There was rumors of Biscuit's, uh, Biscuit being like the course being long, whatever it is, what it is. It's long, short, upside down. I don't care. The time is what the time is. That's how I think about it. And sometimes like when you give it your best it's just not enough but you know you bounce back um next race i ran the state course arthur west meet Carrollton, georgia infamous state course my coach made it a point for us to like coaches my coach made it a point for us to like not be intimidated by the state course which worked in present day i don't think Carrollton's that bad in present day even though i i it still cooks me up I, like it's still not that bad first time though I ran it, I ran 18.32, went up way too fast on them hills the first lap, and then the second lap, like, spun back for it. Next race was County, 17.57. I ran a minute and 18 seconds faster than my first County race. The next few races were 18.31, 17.17, 18.54, bad race, 17.37, 18.04 at Horse Park, a little worse than I had did at County, but it was to qualify for state and nobody was really focused on PRing. That was the last thing from my mind. Then came the sophomore state race where I was just like so unbelievably scared. And I did a really good job at hiding it because if you look at pictures, I look like I look comp, but all that was, my mind was going a million miles a minute. The morning of the race, it was mid to low 40s. So it was just cold as I ever know. and my hands were like rocks during the whole race and if you ever get that feeling 
during a cold cross country race where you're like shaking uncontrollably and you don't know if you're just nervous or you're cold that's exactly what i was feeling at this time the start we gun goes off it got called back so we fall back shook it off went back out i finished the race at 1759.89 and that concluded my sophomore year there was nothing i could have done differently with that race because i genuinely gave it all that i had recap freshman year ended at 18 18 sophomore year ended at a 17 oh wait i get a minute faster every year junior year might be the most mentally challenging year of high school sports i've ever dealt with but i asked to be great and as i said to a teammate before and after the season started, you don't pray to God for roses and then get upset when it rains. This was the first year where I kind of had an idea of what I was doing, but I was exposed to so many different ideas and philosophies that I didn't know what was right and what was wrong. But this was the year I kind of developed that and figured it out. I had a watch going into cross country season. I took my season to understand training cycles and more of the logistics of running. like. How fast I go out affects my later miles and, you know, analyzing my races and how my failures, fixing what it is that I did wrong to reach success. That's why this story is filled with so much failure The the mistakes I learned from helped me to improve every step I got on the line. And whenever I had a good race or not, I break the race down and see what I did right, see what I did wrong, get the result, take what's useful and keep it pushing. I took the time to understand things like how my diet affects my body and my race performance, training cycles, all of the above. Could have waited until I got back into conditioning when I was on the road in Miami, but the feeling of getting the work in no matter where I was, it being a challenge to get on a treadmill made it a lot more fun. And a week of my conditioning was done on a cruise in the gym or around like the little point 10 track that they have on the the carnival ships i opened up my season lca with an 18 flat it was my first time on the course whatever right it is what it is there was even a section where i i went the wrong way like i went left when i was supposed to go straight but they were saying it was fast when it wasn't excuses excuses i ran a slow race but hey we won the race so it's a plus like as a team but my next race a week later at North Georgia, I went 17.09, second for my PR. I had two minute and 10 second course PR for my freshman year. Seeing results like this makes me think about this example. If I was building a skyscraper and I had a break for every run I did from then and now, I'd be a real high. It's the same with my runs. I let other people's pressure negatively affect me and I'd get frustrated with every time I didn't hit the goal and I was so tunnel vision on the goal that I hadn't yet made the connection that I was getting closer and closer, inching closer and closer the whole season. But if it wasn't 16, I wasn't happy and I wasn't satisfied with the performance. I was constantly questioning what I did wrong and what other people were doing that I wasn't doing. And when literally all I was doing was getting closer to the goal, I would question and question. Matter of fact, my progression in every event that I've ever ran has always been directly downwards time-wise. Next race, I went 1840. Worst race of the season, but it was like biscuit. It was a weekday meet. Like I came from school to the I don't I don't do good on those. I've learned that. And it was a really hard course, but excuses, excuses, I'm slow, whatever, right? It was especially mentally hard on me and knowing that I had ran two seconds worse than I had ran it the year before, but that's life. Next race, the state course, I ran 1802, which was still 18. It was my fourth race and I had only gone 17 like one time in the season, but something was changing. Like I can tell that there, it was a crowded race and I competed very well in it in terms of when I decided to move up in the pack and generally just racing smart next week it was county we wanted top five my coach was talking about we can win but we were working on top five this week i had a really good week of intentional training and what i mean by that is that sometimes runners will just go to practice and they'll just run hit the times if you know what i mean you know what i mean and that's 
different from mindfully practicing, mindfully feeling out what the paces feel like, being in tune with practice, keeping your form up, keeping your head up, and running the times and going through the motion is a completely different thing. We were fine tuning that week and it worked. That, like we were in key with that. I'm 17 flat. And I think out of all my races, this is the race that I'm most proud of. Like besides the obvious 16, like this is the race that I'm most proud of. I competed that race. I competed very hard. My pacing was on point. I was up at the front pack and, or at the back of it, but I was there. Like you, if you look at the video, I was there. And I had a really good kick at the end to seal the deal. The race was the little bit of grace I needed and I achieved where I was like, okay, I'm getting somewhere. I'm, I might not be not, I might not be completely rolled this season compared to my freshman year. I had ran a minute and 43 seconds faster than my fastest time at that course. And obviously it's a really big improvement. And then from 1757, there was improvement as well from my sophomore year. This is where I really started my progress towards the 16. I went 1724 from there and then 1711 at A6. Even though I was getting closer and closer, I was getting more and more frustrated that I couldn't get it. I, I would say things like, I don't get it. What are these guys doing that I'm not? And would genuinely doubt myself, beat myself up and just like lose faith every single time that I didn't hit it, even though I was getting closer. October 24th, coaches like go on a five to seven mile run. I hadn't ran that Saturday or Sunday coming off A6. That was a huge mistake. I jumped into a high mileage run. I was feeling stress in my right leg, especially going downhill. That would foreshadow later what I had and what I was dealing with. Like, Loki, like I painted my leg, but it was okay. I got through it. I stretched it when I got home and everything was good. So, got Coach Wood on Saturday. Can't wait. I didn't know what it was. I was used to running through pain and I ignored these things all the time, but this one just wouldn't go away. I went out on a run with a little bit of soreness and, or like an ache or something in my leg and I came back limping. I ran out 3.5 something miles from my house with no rides. So I'm like, all right, let me just make it back because the, the, walk, the walk back is going to be even worse. It took me a few days to process what really came and I like to really come to terms with it. At first, I thought it was one of those things that would just come and go for a day, but it stuck out and grew as I walked around school or just generally anywhere that had a remotely hard surface. So I was like, what's wrong with me? What's going on? Because this isn't like this isn't just going away. This was a different pain than what I was previously dealing with. This wasn't just tendonitis anymore. I did the research and that was later confirmed by my trainer and I was showing signs of IT band syndrome which is a overuse injury when the quote the tough band of the tissue a tibial band that extends from the pelvic bone to the shin bone becomes so tight that it rubs against the thigh bone and it's an overuse injury we had a meet i had to sit out from coach wood so i missed two races already winder barrel from when we had the the storm or whatever i don't know if you heard about that and then this race which was another chance to get a pr coach would so i was slowly losing my opportunities to hit this 16 and my dreams were slipping from me right and coach wood was the site of my original 1708 pr course so that that was just kind of a double like it hurt and i had to sit and watch from the sidelines to sit and watch others get faster than me and watch teammates surpass me you would think i was supposed to be happy about this and i was i was happy but another part of me was bitterness and anger from what had happened to me so unfairly like i i felt that my team was progressing and fulfilling this this vision of what we envisioned our team to be and i wasn't a part of that i wasn't contributing i was just kind of sitting doing nothing that left me with a stinging pain in my heart that i remember to this day so sectional two weeks later from this happening and from that point, I was strictly acting off pressure because it's different looking at it now, but when then I couldn't run at 10 minute pace on pavement without it hurting, my back is all the way against the wall. Was that it? Like, was the, all the work over the summer, running in Miami, running on the boat, spending all that time away from people and just for nothing. I had to get better 
if it took a million ibuprofen in the morning of because I was running that race. This was my last chance to get that PR I dropped so hard of. So me and my school trainers drew up a two-week plan that would shape me and get me ready to perform to a quality standard for state and sectionals. The plan was simple. I was going to have a week of recovery and a week of preparation. A week of recovery was dedicated to maintaining my fitness and nursing my injury. Well, preparation was about learning how I'm going to run with it, manage it, and practice dealing with it while running similar race paces, right? The first week had to be the longest week of my life. I was isolated from my team, being in the trainer, and I would just go from the trainer straight to the gym because I wasn't practicing with them. I was getting home late, but not only was I getting home late, but I was just generally disconnected from everybody else around me. I was very uninterested in conversation. I would call my friends and just be strangely quiet because I didn't want to talk about anything else. I thought I was genuinely going crazy because besides when I'd be better, like I, I just didn't want to talk anything else about anything else i couldn't breathe or talk to anyone unless i got better and finally broke 17. it created a deep sense of anxiety and paranoia but in a way kept me alert and it kept me focused i was strictly to sleep when i was supposed to be and i had tunnel vision on getting better in a way it was exactly what i needed a week dedicated to health and fitness of my body Week two, I got thrown in a workout, ran a total of twice that week besides pre-race day and obviously the race day, including the following. So Monday, I had a two-mile bike warm-up, mile 800, mile 800, 400, 300, 200, and the following times I ran 518, 224, 521, 229, 63, 56, 31. You can see that it's nothing really special. It was a normal workout week. I had cross training that Tuesday and another 25 minute easy with five minutes biking. The race. Finally, it's that time, we in the box. It's that day, granted I'm off of like, I'm off of ibuprofen and probably wouldn't even be able to finish the race without it because I felt my knees clicking at the end. But he's got a horn. I don't know why he had a horn. A gun would have been so much cooler, but he does the horn and then we got out i'm at the back of the front pack just it's at a downhill up. start there's like no hills on this course besides like steady incline and this one like wall but you don't even really feel it first mile gang is all together we go out there sub five we're 505 boom we're chilling we feel great right so we keep moving up the whole race keep catching people we're making moves passing and then we got to the two mile mark 1040 my track pr is like 1035 so i'm like oh yeah we got this but by how much so a little bit into the second mile i really start pressing here my knees my knees clicking but i i still kept going here comes the hill kill the hill it, it wasn't nothing last stretch i'm running i'm running see the clock 1634 1635 so i start i start sprinting right and then so the last part i'm just running i'm running i feel my knees still clicking but i just i'm chasing this pr and then i might have taken the ibuprofen too early because i'm feeling it but i'm still running i'm running 1642 1643 1644 i passed through and i did it i celebrated with my teammate that i got me at the last part and we're just so surprised everybody's mesmerized at what we just did did the cool down it was we watched the girls run so first in the region fifth in the sectional we were projected six so we upset somebody finally got that pr and off injury state race i ran 18 12 whatever it already happened i'm ready to run an eight again anyway